Good morning. Welcome back to the Retirement Report. I'm Hank Parrott, your host. All right, we're talking about how to save for retirement, okay? So we're going to jump right back in. Here's how the process that I utilize with my clients works. So we create a financial roadmap. How do we start again? Well, let's start with uh, expenses, right? What do you have for lifestyle expenses? What are your liabilities? Do you have any debt, in other words, out there that we have to take care of? What is your current income, all right? And we look at all the deductions that you have coming out, how much you're contributing to your retirement plan, how much maybe comes out for different group like life insurance, health insurance, all of that, right? What about your house? Do you own your own home? Do you have a mortgage? What are your property taxes? How much of that mortgage? What about your uh, property insurance? We want to separate those out. Those are going to be expenses you're always going to have, whereas that mortgage is going to eventually be paid off. We look at the mortgage. What are you paying for interest? How long do you have to go to pay it off? Is there a, you know, some opportunity there maybe to do a refi uh, to help reduce down the time to pay it off and maybe also reduce your payments through uh, lower interest rates because we definitely have some uh, good uh, mortgage rates still today. The other is in, in retirement. What's it going to look like? We got to worry about inflation. How are we going to make sure we make enough money on our money to stay ahead of inflation so we don't lose the purchasing power of those dollars? What that means simply is this. When you go to the grocery store, right, and you're spending that money and it's, uh, you're, getting, you're either spending more to get as much or you're walking out with a lot less, right? So that's inflation. When you're seeing all of a sudden that the money's not lasting or that you're having to dip into savings more and more and more to make up the difference, that's the impact of inflation. So if you can earn enough on your money to stay ahead of inflation and taxes, then that's one less thing to worry about and that's, that's going to help preserve your money, make sure you don't run out in retirement. The other is looking at what resources, of course, you're going to have in retirement, such as Social Security. Are you going to have a pension? Do you have other income sources? Are you going to have an inheritance? You know, a lot of people don't like to think about that or, or consider that as a part of their planning, and we don't put it in there as normally as the um, uh, other than, well, let's just say we at least want a consideration. We want to know if it's there, if it's, if, if it, you know, or what, what impact it may have. All right. Next, lifestyle expense worksheet. Some clients come in and they've got a, they've got their own spreadsheets. I mean, they're so organized. They've got it down to the penny. They know exactly where their money goes. Uh, I will say that's the exception to the rule, though, for, for, you know, for many. It's they've got kind of a rough idea. They may have a, you know, um, somewhat of a budget. Other words, and they, they kind of know about what, goes out each month but for many it's, they're not quite sure so this is a great tool for that this helps go through and hit things that we don't necessarily think of all the time as I mentioned property taxes and insurance uh, automobile insurance life insurance if you have long term long-term care insurance umbrella liability policies things like birthdays we don't think necessarily that's something that's spread through the year how much do we t do we spend on birthday gifts you know what about holidays Christmas what do we typically spend there so I help you go through and, and find some of those expenses we don't think of pet expenses personal care expenses, haircuts, getting going to the salon, whatever it might be, nails, you know, you name it. So we try to cover that. Clothing, shoes, a lot of things we just don't think of month to month, but they add up over time. So we want to know what those, what it adds up to over the course of the year, figure that into a monthly amount, and then we go to the next thing, which is our roadmap. Okay, so on the roadmap, this is a great tool for you because the purpose of it is to show how much then based on those expenses. So let's go to that next slide. And this will show at the bottom of the page, you'll see lifestyle expense on the bottom left. So we put that number of where our expenses are, and then we want to have about, um, you know, about that amount in a checking account. We want to have about six times that amount as an emergency fund. And then we want to determine over the next few years, say through one to three years in particular, what kind of planned expenses. Am I going to have to replace a vehicle? Am I going to maybe have to do some major thing like replace the roof on the home or an air conditioning unit or, you know, things that we know are coming up and we want to have money set aside for that then finally we get our money uh, that's left that money that's in our retirement accounts for instance it's we've got maybe invested in the stock market whatever it might be that money bank money all of it together that's our retirement that's our long-term uh, retirement account our long-term fund if you will that's where we want to earn enough four to nine percent to stay ahead of inflation and taxes in that big red box there right at three to five percent we got to stay ahead of that and we're going to pull income from that sometime in our retirement to help us supplement our income to cover our living expenses to take care of replenishing retirement uh, excuse me emergency funds and and short-term funds that's what that's about okay we'll get rid of the slides for a moment so that's the basics of just setting up a foundational plan, okay? So when, when clients come in, for, the, in for every week I give, for the first 10 to get in, 
to call my office at 615-376-5325. We're going to start like that. We're going to give you a comprehensive financial plan. It's not just to come in and have a, a, a free consultation. I know you hear that, um, you know, ad nauseum, all right, from people. And how valuable is that to go sit down with someone for maybe an hour and uh, while they're looking at your watch, drink a couple of drinking, maybe get some free coffee out of it. But of what real value does that end up being, okay? The real value comes in having a plan. And what I'm doing here is offering you a plan, all right? So again, for the first 10 callers, I'm gonna help you understand when to take Social Security, how to maximize those benefits, and there's a lot of rules and complexities with Social Security, with Medicare. I can help you navigate that. I'm very, very, very uh, keep up to date with those, let's just say. Retirement accounts, that's another area that I really specialize in. It's an area that I go to conferences a couple of times a year. I do uh, a lot of continuing ed throughout the year to stay up with that. Uh, continuing education. Same thing when it comes to legal matters for estate planning. Uh, I work with a great, some of the best estate planning attorneys that you're going to find anywhere. Uh, same thing with working with uh, accountants. If you've got people, I'll work with them. If you don't, I can help bring some very good people to help you with these things as well. That's a big part of the planning. It's a team approach, okay? We cover everything. If we're going to work with taxes, you've seen Dr. Friday on my show before. This is one of the things we do all the time. We do up like with Roth plans you know, both uh, planning. Uh, is, there, is there opportunity there? I met with some folks uh, earlier, like some new clients um, earlier this week. And this is a common one that we see. And we were talking about ways. Here's an example when we talk about taxes as we have with Dr. Friday many times. Understanding how the tax system works is how you can use the tax system to your advantage. None of us want to pay more than we are well, than we absolutely have to by law pay. So we, we want to meet our legal obligation, but we certainly don't want to be uh, having the IRS as, as a charitable contribution, okay, that we're not making money or giving money away to them. So understanding something. One of the keys is this. We have a system, a progressive tax system. So at first, for a married couple, that means for approximately the first $20,000, depending on your age, could be $23,000 that you don't have to pay any tax on, right? Then the next 18000 approximately, you only pay 10% tax. Then we get up into that 15% bracket. And basically what it means is that you could make, when you count, uh, take into consideration your standard, and that's standard deduction, by the way. For those that itemize, you may have, you know, uh, 10 or 15 or more $1,000 uh, in, in money that you don't have to pay tax on. In other words, I uh, met with some folks earlier, and they, they, I think it was, what, 20, 30, somewhere around thirty to $35,000 uh, that first, first thirty to thirty-five that they don't have to pay tax on, then you've got another eighteen thousand. So they're almost fifty thousand dollars, and all they've paid is eighteen hundred in tax. Understanding how that works, now what happens? We've got a fifteen percent bracket. So for most people, that means for most married couples, you're going to be able to make about a hundred thousand dollars and still stay in that in that fifteen percent bracket. Okay. Now here's where that comes into play. Any money below that, then what's the likelihood that that fifteen percent bracket is going to get lower? in your lifetime. In other words, think about tax deferral. And when I mentioned those earlier acts back in the 1970s, right, with ERISA in 1974 and with the Tax Revenue Act in 1978, that's when tax deferral became a big deal, right? That's the creation of IRAs and 401ks and all these great ways to save and defer taxes. Well, what were tax rates back then? All right, three times what they are today. If you were making fifty thousand dollars a year, you were up in a, uh, let's see, what was it about a forty five, forty nine percent? Excuse me, forty nine percent tax bracket. Okay, it's quite a bit different to today at fifteen percent. So you can see where tax deferral made a lot more sense, didn't it? Because what was going on, right? I, well, yeah, I don't want to pay 50% tax on that money. If I can defer it by putting it in a retirement account, and when I retire, one of the things that's supposed to happen is my income is probably going to be lower. Yes, it's possible. The second thing is I'm going to then uh, have a lower tax bracket. That's the goal. All right, well, then it worked. Right, from then a 50% bracket to today a 15% bracket, yep, that was a good plan. How about going forward today though? When we're at historically low tax rates, if I'm, if, do I really, is it, how important is it to say 15% tax, okay? Am I gonna really pay less than 15% in the future? Well, you should know, and if you don't, that's part of the planning process is to determine that, and we do that, one, is we look at your expenses because whatever your income sources are gonna be, you're gonna be pulling money from your retirement account to make up the difference to be able to maintain your standard of living. And that's at least gonna be what your, your taxable income's gonna be then, probably, right? 
Now there are some ways, that, a lot of good strategies you can employ to reduce that, but that's how this process works. All right, now, think this through a bit with regard to your, with the, the importance then of taxes and understanding them. So if I've got someone that's in that, you know, right at that 100, that, let's say they're making 80, okay, we got a $20,000 cushion in between the 80 and the 100, that we can use to maybe do Roth conversions and only pay a 15% tax so that in the future we won't have to pay any tax on that money again, including the earnings on that money. So you can see the advantage of that and understanding how this works. And when we sit down, what we're looking to do in terms of how this fits into your planning. Okay, so understanding this is real important, and also understanding the other part about tax deferral. Does it make sense for me to put to really load up a 401k or an IRA? All right, if a traditional, okay, if I'm in that 15% bracket, would I be better to maybe put be putting that money if I've got a 401k Roth option, a thrift savings plan? You do have a Roth option as well. So if I've got that ability, and more and more plans should have that with passage of recent legislation, uh, or Roth IRAs, all right, then would I be better rather than if it's, I'm only going to pay 15% tax on it, wouldn't it be better just to put it in a Roth and have it grow tax-free for future tax, tax considerations? In particular, if you're going to have large retirement accounts, what happens when you reach age 70 and a half and you start taking those required minimum distributions? I, you know, you could be talking about fifty, seventy-five thousand dollars a year in in those, and if you've got a pension, and if you've got Social Security, all of a sudden maybe you're up way over that. Into what happens when you cross out of that fifteen percent bracket? It's a twenty-five percent bracket. Oh, that's like a sixty-seven percent increase in taxes. Okay going from 15 to 25. You see why we want to keep you in 15 and we do all this planning around ways to try to do that or if we're going to be in 25, we want to minimize how much is in 25 if nothing else. All of this can be done with good planning. So see how retirement planning and tax planning kind of go hand in hand. It's how to invest in such a way to maximize my rate of return at the same time keeping my volatility minimal, okay? And at the same time, I want to minimize taxes, right? Lots of little juggling things, but this can easily be done. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to take a break. When we come back, I want to jump into a little bit. I've covered a lot. I've jumped ahead. We're going to skip a lot of slides. This is good. And we're going to talk about the three worlds of investing because there's a lot of misinformation out there. And I'm going to give you some straight skinny on how some of these things work. All right. Going to educate you a little bit about some safe ways to invest as well as how to invest in the market. So we're going to get into that when we come back. Join us here. We'll be right back on the Retirement Report.